Hello there everyone and welcome to this week's cycle blog whereby I'm seeking over the next few months to cycle all the way down on my trusty exercise bike down to the Ugandan High Commission in London which is about 200 miles. Well you may wonder how far I've got so far. Well perhaps I'll tell you eventually. Today I want to talk to you just a little bit about some of the animals that we find in the marvellous country of Uganda. Here I have my Uganda t-shirt on and in the middle there is a particular little bird which we'll be thinking about just in a moment. But first of all you'll find if you go to Uganda a whole range of animals in different parts of the country and the first uh, I'd like to tell you is that they can be divided into uh, these different groups. Well, first of all, you've got primates, such as chimpanzees, red-tailed monkeys, golden monkeys, grey cheat, mangabane, and many, many more. I think you get mountain gorillas in some parts as well. Then you've got the carnivores, such as lions, leopards, African wildcats, cheetahs, hyenas, and that type of animal. And of course, there's the herbivores. Buffaloes, elephants, elephants are my favourite. Giraffes, hippos, rhinos, zebras, antelope, something called the Uganda cob, which you might find out a bit more another time. And then there's reptiles like crocodiles, pythons, snakes, monitor lizards, and chameleons. And then of course there's birds, such as the African eagle, lots of vultures, and so on. And there's one bird that I particularly want to talk to and share some information with you about. Now if you look at my t-shirt there's a flag and in the middle is a bird and that's the national bird of Uganda. It's the crested crane, the national bird. And it appears not just on the flag but on the coat of arms for Uganda. And it's abundantly found around the country's many lakes and rivers that create fertile, rich marshes for wildlife. Uganda is abundant with the kind of wet, flat marsh and grassland where these birds love to live. And the bird has become this symbol closely tied to the nation of Uganda. Here in these marshlands, they build their nests away from the reach of predators and it's still a good, wet, reliable source of water for them. And so they're already living around these marshy areas so they don't tend to migrate like other birds do but simply stay in one place throughout the year. But they are endangered. It's a resilient animal, this crested crane. It can be found in abundance in some areas but some of its habitat is slowly being depleted. And there's currently an issue over the uses of water and the marshes and the grasslands which they typically reside in. This means that areas are being dried up of uh, water for um, the fields to be used for crops and the water being used on crops. And that's caused the crested crane population to decline in recent years by about 65,000. And the animal is now being designated as endangered, which is a great shame. They're omnivores. The African crested crane is an omnivore, so it eats both meat and plants. Uh, most omnivores, omnivorous birds, uh, mix food that they eat with a mix of leaves and seeds from a variety of plants, as well as insects, worms, frogs even and have even been known to be seen eating small fish and snakes and other aquatic eggs. So they eat quite a bit. They use cattle as cover. It's not uncommon to find large groups of these cranes clustered together amidst large groups of cattle. This is something they are learnt to do to provide cover from predators who won't be able to approach them quite as easily. And most of the predators that hunt birds 
in the African continent are like dog size or a bit smaller. So if the birds position themselves amongst a large herd of animals, they can find greater protection because it is dogs that hunt them the most. It's uh, well adapted to avoid these predators, but you know, domestic dogs in particular can pose a threat to the birds around the villages and towns. So they do nest up in tall trees as well as taking cover amongst the herds of grazing cattle. These birds love to dance. The grey crowned crane has a breeding display that involves an elaborate dance with various jumpings and bows. It's not uncommon for birds, however. But the crested crane is known to dance all year round. They can be seen dancing at any time of the year, including during non-breeding periods. So they really do like a dance. And there'd be a joy of the party if they were to come to one. The young birds often seen joining in the dancing, meaning that they do really love dancing. It's for everyone. Now, the cranes are identified by their distinct call. Now, one of the features of the crane is that its call is a bit different from other cranes. And it's uh, not a goblin-y type of noise, like a turkey, like some of the others have. No, no, it's a bit more of a honking noise, not entirely unlike a, a geese. So you'll be able to tell the difference between some of the, the cranes out there when you're having a look. Uh, but some people sadly think of the cranes, the crested crane as a pest. Why do they do that? Well, they do have a tendency to wind up grazing on farmland where they can potentially do a lot of damage to the crops and harm the livelihood of the farmers and the villagers. Don't think they do the cattle much good, but if they're eating all the crops then that's not very helpful. So they have been often seen clumsily uprooting seedlings in the fields while searching for food and that has a bad effect on the local farming economy. So they're also important for a balanced ecosystem. Well, almost all animals fulfil important role in our ecosystem, that's why we need to take care of them. And these cranes are no exception. One role they're believed to have in the ecosystem is distributing seeds. Since seeds are a major staple of their diet, they spread the seeds with their droppings, inadvertently carrying them elsewhere so the foliage can spread. Cranes also serve to keep populations of bugs in check by eating them wherever they go. Another great fact about these cranes is that they have a wingspan of 6.5 feet. Yes, 6.5 feet! These are some of the tallest birds out there, you know. And the crested crane stands over three feet or about a metre tall. And from tip to tip can measure over six feet, two metres. Despite having wings that are wider than most people are tall, these cranes only weigh a meagre 7.7 .7 pounds. Their hollowed out honeycomb-like bones also help to keep their weight down. This allows them to be light enough to take flight. And one other important and interesting fact is that they can live, well how long do you think these birds might be able to live up to? Five years? Ten years? Twenty years? Well, they can live up to 22 years. Well, this might not be long for human life, that's an incredibly long time for a bird to live in the wild. The average life of a songbird in the wild is a mere two years. This means that these cranes are living 11 times longer than the average of most birds in the wild. This is at least partly due to the territorial nesting habits preventing them from falling prey and suffering an early demise. And one final lovely fact about these incredibly interesting birds is that they stay with their partner for life. Yep, once they're hitched up, they're there forever. They really do take their vows seriously. Crested Cranes practice what we call monogamy, meaning that once they find a partner, they remain with them with that same breeding partner for life. They form pair bonds 
while they are young and will remain with that bird they bond with for all their lives, breeding together each year and raising their young together. The average, the advantage of this, sorry, is not entirely understood, but boy, it's marvellous, isn't it? Isn't it cute that they stay together? Perhaps an example for us all. So, this is the bird of Uganda that you'll find on the flag and on various other parts of the coat of arms. So, I hope you've enjoyed that, just a little run through that interesting bird. And if you want to look at anything else or see these birds in action, just click on the link below and it will take you to a fascinating film. Well, it's been lovely sharing with you today. Take care and God bless.